got a new bait, possibly the cheapest mostly bait I have ever found. And that got me thinking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about musky fishing uh, and specifically how to get started musky fishing because it's difficult and it's expensive. I want to put together a video here with how to get started the, the minimum way, like how little do I have to invest so I can at least try it a couple times before I decide to buy stuff. What you should probably start with if you think you're going to do it for a while. And then like the ideal equipment you're looking for down the road. Like there's there's definitely three ways to approach this. Um, and when I bought this bait, you know, this bait was only $9. A bait like this is $40, $50. And it got me thinking about how just expensive it is to start musky fishing. So as always, you know, I'm, if you're new here, I'm a, a novice musky fisherman you know I've only caught like five I've only been doing it for two years uh, so I definitely am inexperienced myself but going through the process once already you know and like thinking about it and documenting it the whole time uh, I feel like I have some really good options and some really good thoughts to go through if you want to get started if you are an expert or you think of yourself an expert, you've just been doing it for a long time, make sure to put your opinions down below as well. Uh, this video can be for anybody. So if you go to the comment section, hopefully someone more knowledgeable than me may have a talking point that I didn't bring up today. But I'm gonna cast it a little bit, then we'll talk. We'll, we'll fish a little, though. we'll talk. I don't wanna bore you guys up front right away. So let me finish getting my electronics all started up we'll get down the lake a little ways here and uh then we'll talk some more let's get after it so as i take my first cast here what i'd what i suggest right off the bat the first thing i would tell anybody find someone that knows how to do it to start go with them pay for a guided um guided day out do something with someone that knows what they're doing that would be where i start it's where i started someone that knows how to musky fish you know, took me out and I only went out with him a few times. Um, and you, you learn a lot because musky fishing's unlike anything else. So my very first suggestion before anything else, find someone that knows what they're doing and get out on the boat with them and then go from there. There are some really important things to know about musky fishing and there's some important tackle to have. And uh, no matter what price point you want to start musky fishing at no matter no matter what you want to do these few things that I'm going to start with today apply across the board so these first things I'm going to talk about are some things you don't think about and some things that you need to think about so step one thing one then probably the most important thing for your safety and the fish health is a net now I caught my first musky in a bass net that was a terrible idea it got the job done, but it was awful experience and uh, I don't wish that upon anyone. My second net I thought was big enough. I paid, you know, like a hundred and hundred bucks or something like that. And I, it was an XL net and I thought it was big enough. Uh, it definitely was not. That net wasn't deep enough because one of the most important parts of a net is how deep it is. So when you have that net laying on your side of the boat while you're working on that fish, it's in the water and you can leave it on the edge while you get your cameras, you get your measuring stuff, your bump board. Uh, so having a net that you think is big enough, it probably isn't go one size bigger. But with a net, I would suggest two things. One, Facebook Marketplace. Find a used one. Nets are one of the most expensive parts of musky fishing, which is really interesting. Or two, like I did, I found one at a uh, flea market. So an old used aluminum net, it's not the greatest, but it'll get the job done. It's, it's large enough to be in the water over the edge of my boat. So the most important piece of musky fishing, if you ask me, is a net. From my experience over the last couple years, uh, having a net just makes the job so much more enjoyable while you're taking care of that fish, while you're getting ready to take your pictures, things like that. Um, having a net is key. So I have a net in the description that I would recommend, but my, my number one recommendation, find one used, flea market, Facebook, Craigslist, a friend, whatever it may be, because they're not 
cheap. Uh, the one that I would suggest is like 179. So, you know, that gives you an idea of the price point. But I suggest cheaping out on a lot of these pieces that we're talking about here. But talking about this first five pieces of gear uh, that is universal across the board, get yourself a good net. Next, one of the cheapest parts, uh, hopefully you already have one laying around, is a nice big pair of pliers. This one's even on the small side a little bit, maybe like a 15 inch big needle nose pliers, something you already should have in the garage or the shed or laying around. Uh, if not hardware store, you can get them for 20 bucks. You need yourself a massive pair of heavy duty pliers to get those hooks out. Getting these giant hooks out of these giant fish takes a lot of work. So make sure you got yourself a great pair of pliers. With that said, make sure you get yourself a pair of hook cutters for two reasons. One, if you hook yourself, you're gonna be able to cut those barbs off, push it through, get yourself taken care of. But two, if you got a hook deep down in the gills or in the fish where, where you're gonna kill it, you can try to save it by getting those hooks cut, see if you can push it through, you know, away from the barb, or maybe even just take it right out with the hook cutter. That would be ideal. So having a hook cutter is very important. I have one in the description for Amazon. Your local bait shops should have them. This one's a Berkeley. I got it from a local bait shop. It's only 19 bucks. Once again, another cheap part. All right, with most of the terminal tackle out of the way, we're about to get into some opinions now some uh my opinions from recently going through starting to musky fish and that's a lot of gear there are a million choices out there tons of it is really expensive i got three levels uh worth of worth of advice when it comes to gear if you're the kind of person who clicked on this video just thinking maybe i'll get into musky fishing and see what it costs you can get in for a very low price. Uh, I caught my first muskie on a giant catfish spinning reel. Now I went through three of those reels before I switched to bait casters, uh, but you can definitely get like a Walmart catfish combo and it will do the job. You can get out, you can throw these big lures, you can make them move how you need them to, and you can catch some fish. Now with that said, I would suggest figuring out which one of your bass bait casters has the highest drag. So this Abu Garcia is 13. This Luz Tur Tournament MP, I believe, is my second cheapest. It's 14 pounds of drag. Um, that's that's really good. That's what you're looking for, those big numbers. Like a, like a $350 Tranx has like 16 pounds. And it's a little different because of the size, but 16 pounds of drag. So if you're talking about getting in for cheap, I just suggest the two reels I link below. I have this Abu Garcia, comes in at about 13 pounds, and then this Luz is 14, and they're on the cheaper end of the scale. If you find one for cheaper, uh, or you have one already, that's that 12 pound mark, you're gonna struggle to get some big fish in, like especially getting those hooks through with that little a drag, but uh, it will get the job done. Like I said, we're talking cheapest of the cheap right now. We're gonna start with the reel because that's the most expensive part of the cheap, um, and you're talking about, you know, 100 bucks or more. Uh, you'd think maybe the rod would be the, 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 the most expensive part of the cheap, but I have, I have this rod here I'm gonna talk about in a second. So I went through a couple of, you know, Walmart combo, catfish, catfish style rods. Um, I did spend like $150 on an actual musky rod. Uh, it was only an eight footer though, so it's definitely kind of short. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything shorter than eight feet. Um, but I do recommend what I'm using right now. I have two of them now because how cheap they are. These are Shimano TDR, they're trolling downrigger rods. They're eight foot six. Uh, let's see, I'll give you the actual stats here. <laughs> this one specifically is a, oh, a nine foot heavy action, moderate fast. Um, these I think are perfect rods for musky fishing perfect rods for casting. Uh, they have plenty of stiffness and backbone to drive those hooks home. They have all of the, the uh, strength to handle a fight with a muskie, and they're long enough. You want that nine feet to get those big figure eights, to get that leverage on the hook set, to be able to reach the back of the boat on your figure eight and set the hook on that fish. So these rods I recommend for if you're just trying it out for fun and you don't want to invest a lot of money as well as 
my medium price, the one where you're like, all right, I'm gonna must give it for a few years for sure, I still recommend this rod because it's only $39. I can't even begin to explain to you guys how cheap that actually is. But if you're looking at musky stuff right now, you know that a $39 rod seems too good to be true. But I'll tell you what, I've been using that one for two years now. And other than my first musky, I've caught them all on that one. <clears throat> I've never had a problem with these rods uh, being too soft so you're getting uh, backlash, nothing like that. These rods are perfect for musky fishing. And when you're talking about $39, why not, right? Give it a shot. See if you like it. Now the next part of this information is, you know, kind of boring. You're going to want some 80 pound plus braid. You're going to tie that to a 100 pound floral leader ideally that'd be the best 100 110 if you go with 80 because of price or whatever it's understandable and then i would 100 percent suggest just getting yourself a double showgirl now this one isn't a double showgirl this is a double cowgirl it's one size bigger but i would recommend the double showgirl you can get them for like 17 dollars i have caught almost all my muskies on a showgirl um i caught one on this cowgirl the rest have been on the showgirl so that really fills out the cheapest of the cheap. And when you add that up, it's not that much. Under 200 bucks for a setup, roughly, um, depending on what reel you go with. So just to recap, my cheapest of the cheap is any reel you have or the cheapest bass rod you can find with some pretty good drag, a $39 rod, 80 pound braid, floral leader, and a double showgirl, that setup will catch you fish i promise uh depending on uh i should i guess i shouldn't promise it'll catch you fish muskies are the fish of 10,000 casts um but i can promise you that it can get the job done if you get into a situation where you need to catch one so we talked about the cheapest of the cheap let's talk about uh the intermediate you're gonna do this for a few years um what should you look for now I don't know if I can recommend any more expensive rod than this, even with the intermediate. These Shimano TDRs, like I said, plenty of length, plenty of strength, they can get the job done. I have a hard time recommending anything else, uh, simply because of the price for that intermediate range. The one where it's like, I got a little bit of money, we can try to get something. I would recommend making sure you get yourself a better net than a better rod in that circumstance. As far as a reel goes, I think in the intermediate, that's where you spend your money. You know, I'm talking a Tranks 400 for 300 bucks range. That is what I would recommend. Getting an actual musky reel to pair with these rods is where that intermediate money comes from. Where that money, <laughs> where it's going to hurt to spend it and you don't know that you're going to keep fishing for muskies. Uh, it's still, I think that's, that's the, the ideal spot to spend your money. So my intermediate setup doesn't change much. Uh, all I would change with my intermediate setup, like I said, is the reel. And maybe make sure to get yourself a little more quality braid to put on. Because um, you can find braid for really cheap, you can find braid for really expensive. Uh, I'm not the guy <laughs> to find a review or do a review online. Like on online, not like online. <laughs> but go out there, do some research, see what other people suggest and maybe spend a little extra money there on the intermediate setup. But as far as like your leader quality goes, they're pretty universal. As far as your bait quality goes, it's fairly universal. Just make sure you're sharpening those hooks even right out of the package. Um, but like I said, my intermediate and my beginner package, my, my, I don't know if I'm ever going to musky fish other than one time. And I know I'm gonna do it for a couple years, but I'm not dedicated. The only real thing that changes for me, get yourself a better reel. Like I said before, anyone that's more seasoned than me or has been doing this for a really long time, make sure to let me know your opinions. I know a lot of people out there that are like, oh, just spend the money up front. You won't regret it. I have a hard time believing that, especially when it's something as niche as musky fishing, because you may go out two or three times for a year and think, I'm never going to do this again. And it's really going to suck if you spend, you know, three three four thousand dollars on equipment and gear and everything up front and uh you regret it so i think you just get yourself to a point where you can get it done personally 
and then upgrade from there. As you get some money, throw on a better reel. As you get some money, put that reel on a better rod, things like that. Uh, but I know some of you out there are definitely gonna suggest, you know, just get the good stuff right away. That way it doesn't fail you when you're trying to get a muskie in the boat, things like that. It makes sense, it's a good argument. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, time's tough. Gas is damn near $6 a gallon in some places. So, you know, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta take that into consideration. And now, when we talk about ideally, you know you're gonna do this for a few years, for sure. There's no doubt in your mind, you're gonna do it. I would 100% go the route of uh, oh, those weeds. <laughs> they got me excited though. I would 100% suggest any St. Croix rod or go to your local bait shop. Or if you're within 100 miles of this place, uh, Thorn Brothers. Go there and just get whatever they suggest for your setup. Those guys at Thorn Bros are very ed educated. They know what they're talking about. Years and years of experience. They've treated me well every time I've gone in there. So make sure if you're within 100, 100 miles, 150 maybe even 200, uh, go see these guys. They're gonna help you out for sure getting you set up. If you got a limited budget, right? And you know you're gonna musky fish, go there. Get some recommendations from some truly experienced people. But, but, my suggestions would be still, you know, a Tranks. I still suggest the Tranks real. And get yourself a quality brand rod. Something like St. Croix, whose warranties are incredible. You can send the rod back, get it fixed, get it replaced for free, things like that. Uh, find yourself a quality rod. I will link below a St. Croix rod that I would suggest that I have seen buddies use that swear by them. Um, but in general, make sure to sell, get yourself quality name brand with a good warranty. And you're gonna want definitely a minimum of eight feet. And if you're talking about that price for a rod, make sure you get yourself a nine footer, 10 footer. Now, as far as baits go, what are you gonna throw for muskies? There are an incredible array of designs, styles, companies. Uh, they make all kinds of insane things to throw for muskies. My suggestion is when you got a couple 20s laying around, go buy a new one. Go buy one, build up your stock, if you will, uh, and find something you like to fish with. I have become a damn near blade only thrower because it's the only thing I've ever had follows. It's the only thing I've ever caught fish on is this exact bait here, um, are blades. I think they're just such a high percentage bait. I have a really hard time throwing anything else. I have this new bait in the boat today. I've thrown it for a little bit, but I can't get away, can't get away from throwing blades ever. You know, on the other opposite end of the spectrum, <clears throat> you guys have seen me fish with Hunter. He hates throwing blades. He'll throw a million baits a night. But every time he throws a blade on, he's annoyed. And I get it, 100% get it. We all develop, you know, your own, your, your own opinions of baits as you're going. You know, if you throw blades, you know, for an entire day, don't get a follow. The next day you go out and throw a topwater, get four strikes, you're gonna love to throw topwater. It's all you're gonna wanna throw. And that's kind of what happened to me. You know, <clears throat> I had like two or three, two or three different styles of baits. And we went for two days when I first went out. And I didn't even move anything other than with blades. And then I caught my first muskie on a double showgirl. So I immediately <laughs> grew an attachment to throwing blades. Um, and then since then, it's just, you know, I throw them the most. So I have the most percentage of getting follows. Like I know I have a bias here, <laughs> but in general, they're just, they're just, they're just dumb baits. Cast them reel them in make sure the blades are spinning that's all there is to it you don't have to worry about cadences you don't have to worry about you know is it swimming right things like that it's the easiest bit it's the easiest bait to throw and with its high percentage that i've had on it it's hard to throw anything else but that would be my suggestion for baits i have no you know specialties i have no advice i will put my favorite bucktail here down in the description but in general you know, as you fish, you're gonna find yourself enjoying more certain baits more than others. And uh, those are the ones I suggest when you get a paycheck, go spend 20, 30, 40 bucks, throw them in a towel. But in general, I think that wraps up 
you know, a pretty good starting point. If you don't know anything about musky fishing, anything at all, you just like seeing some videos and you're like, man, that looks fun. Go find someone that does it. Go find a buddy, go find an uncle's friend's cousin that'll take you. Uh, go pay for a guide service uh, and enjoy yourself. I went from never fishing really anything but bass, walleye sometimes, to now that I do not leave my house without my musky rods. I don't care what lake we're going to, I pretty much got my musky rods in here at all times. I am absolutely addicted to it. So <laughs> beware, you enjoy fishing, and especially the analogy I've used a couple times on this, on this channel now, is if you enjoy hunting. Musky fishing brings me the excitement that hunting brings me the preparation work that goes into it and then that you know just seeing deer from your tree stand feeling seeing your shooter buck come in that's the feeling i get when i see these muskies follow when i bring them into the figure eight they're stepping into your shooting lane and i am addicted i absolutely love it <laughs> and uh it's changed my life so 100 percent beware if you're gonna start you might just get addicted to it. But I hope I've shown you guys some fish and some fishing. I'm gonna start just casting now. We're gonna make our way down the shore. We're gonna fish the rest of the evening. We got like two hours left. And man, what a beautiful evening on the lake.